A record run for your money in 2020 with the major markets hitting new all-time highs throughout the year. It's going to be hard to top. So what can investors expect in 2021? Let's bring in our market gurus. Keith Fitzgerald is here and Melissa Armo and Scott Martin. Good, happy new year to all of you. We wish for health and happiness in, in the new year. Scott, I'll start with you first. Will we see a repeat of this record market rally? Yeah, why not, right? Vaccine coming through society, the market at or near record highs, the economy reopening. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, don't just about us. everything. Just about <laughs> everything. No, exactly, Sandra. You know as well as I do from your background, just about everything. I think we have to be careful, though, honestly, not everything, but we have to be careful as investors as we go into the new year here of just expectations and the bullishness that is now, I believe, running rampant on Wall Street as how it sets up the market for likely maybe a fall, some volatility, just things to come maybe out of nowhere as they did in the previous year in 2020. Just be careful of that as an investor as your expectations go forth here. Melissa, do you believe that COVID will likely be the deciding factor with market outcome in the new year? I think the market's going to be driven by COVID in 2021, just like it was in 2020. And personally, when I look at every week, when we have the unemployment claims come out, they're still around that 800,000 number week over week. The market really didn't react negatively to that every week. But the market has reacted when we've had shutdowns, when we've had a second strain, things like that the market has reacted to. If you're an active trader, I say be careful and make sure you're booking profits. If you're a long-term trader, I think the market's going to hold the uptrend. But you could get up one morning, and it usually happens from a Friday till a Monday, where you have a massive move down in the market, and it could be some negative news that has to do with COVID. Fair enough. And you might not be a trader. You might be the average American investor, some of which didn't even participate participate in this rally, whether they were unemployed, couldn't contribute, they were doubtful if it could continue, Keith. So will some of those investors be able to get in on this market in the new year? You know, that's one of the really cool things about the financial markets. Number one, I think we are going to beat COVID. Number two, I think hope is going to trump all of this. And there's no play on words here. I think hope is the aspirational quality that every investor has. So we're going to get some volatility. Most of the time, historically, that's a buying opportunity. But we will beat this virus. If we have the best companies out there with great earnings and strong potential, that's something you want to latch on to for the next three years, five years, 10 years down the road, because that's the time frame that matters, not necessarily the daily squiggles. Oh, man, Scott, I hear I hear historic or record volatility that Keith just mentioned. And I think, OK, buckle up because there is going to be so much that we'll learn in the new year. The effectiveness of the vaccines, you know, how many people are able to get them, how many are available in this country. There's so much that we don't know yet and how that's going to play out. I imagine that the markets are going to be tuning in each and every day for any data points on that. Yeah, they'll be jittery. And, and Keith's a smart guy, Sandra. And I love the term squiggles. I mean, we had <laughs> some squiggles in 2020. And it's kind of easier said than done to kind of hold on to those squiggles, which he's absolutely right about. But when we're in the squiggle, if that's even a thing, that's hard to hang on to because <laughs> of the fact that things look so bleak. Those are the times you really do need to double down, but you have to be prepared as an investor for those times to come around again. All right. I know Keith's trying to jump back in there, Melissa. I'll get to you in just a second. But the squiggle, is that a technical term, Keith? Well, I, I wish it was, but <laughs> I'm not smart enough to invent those things. I think Scott and Alyssa are on to something, though. You know, mm. it's the human quality that's yeah. going to drive this year. And believe it or not, I'm actually very excited about that because the one thing you don't do is bet against Americans, even mm. though the chips are down. We've got a lot of brilliant, resourceful people here, and we are going to get through this. And I think this is the year we do it. It's a fair point, and it's a hopeful message, and we all need that, uh, right, as we kick off a brand new year. Melissa, to you on that, it's not just about what happens here at home, however. Uh, you know the markets are incredibly global, more so today than they ever have been. And our American stock market is going to closely be watching what happens overseas. You know, you're already talking about this second new strain that has been discovered here in the United States, more contagious but not more deadly. Um, so we're going to be watching your Europe. We're going to be watching the rest of the world as well to see how they recover. I agree that people, as far as Americans go, I want to be hopeful about the vaccine and we're going to get through this. And other people in other countries as well are pushing through it. But my concern is that a lot of these states, and specifically New York, I live in New York, they're not allowing these businesses to open and work. People need to work. 
They need to work for their self-confidence, for their self-esteem. And if we don't have people working and we don't have cities thriving like New York, the market can keep going and going and going, but eventually it's gonna come home to roost. And that is a concern. You have in New York here now, Cuomo, push back the evictions and the foreclosures till the deadline until May 1st. That's pushing it well into 2021. These states have to open. People have to go and work. And I think it's a concern for bank stocks for me going into 2021 as far as what's going to happen with the market. Interesting. You can't have all of these foreclosures happening in 2021 and not have it affect the S&P. Scott, she mentioned a couple actual sectors that she's going to be watching there. Uh, as we enter into the new year, I'll give you final word on that. We're both from Chicago. We see the shutdowns. We see what's happened to these cities. I'm in New York, and I see what's happening in this city. As you try to predict what businesses will be able to rebound and rebound the fastest and, and the most, what are you looking at? It doesn't feel good in either city, Sandra, but I actually like bank stocks. We've been owning financials for the last couple of months here because interest rates are likely going to rise as we move throughout 2021 because of all the debts, that, that debt that has been issued, my friends. So with respect to higher interest rates going forward, that helps your financial stocks. Keith, final, final. <laughs> I think you got to be in to win. You got to be best in class and you got to pick companies with savvy CEOs because there are going to be squiggles, but we are going to get through. Are we back on the squiggles again? All right. We're we back on the squiggles. <laughs> it, it is now a thing, the squiggles. We'll be watching all of it. Thank you so much to all three of you for joining us. Happy New Year to all. Happy New Year. Yeah. Okay.